Hi, I'm Jessica, and today I'll talk a little bit about how the Holy Spirit makes a difference in my dating life as a woman. When I feel I'm ready or I'm open to the idea of having a special someone in my life, what do I do? I sit down and I make a list of what I'm looking for in a spouse because I understand how important it is to find a significant other who I'm compatible with. After all, we'll be together for many years to come. Sounds intentional, right? Well, that's what dating is. With purpose and intention, you're spending time with someone, getting to know someone, uh, to see what you have in common in hopes that it leads to a committed relationship. Dating is not a one-size-fits-all type of thing. So the first thing I do, I seek God. Matthew 6, 32-33 says, For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. This is an intentional kingdom principle that seeps into all areas of my life. So needless to say, that includes my dating life. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. In my dating life, I need wisdom and direction because without him, this could be messy and complicated, and I don't have time for all of that. So I allow the Holy Spirit to be a part of the process. The Bible says he is our helper and he will guide us in all things. That includes finding a spouse. When I ask the Holy Spirit to join me in the dating process, he guides me on the parts where, where to start or what I need to look for or how to proceed. And the where to start part usually starts with myself. Why? Because I have some growing to do in the Spirit. Since the Holy Spirit lives within me, I need Him to do a search and reveal. There's fruit I need developed. There's areas in my life that needs healing. There's places in my life that needs deliverance. There's things I need to let go that I need to surrender. So I ask the Holy Spirit to help me identify these things so I can work on them, so I can first be the spouse I'm looking for. This is necessary because the Holy Spirit is the only one who can help navigate all these things. This all takes place when I fellowship with the Holy Spirit in prayer, in worship, and in reading the Word of God. So this does take time and it's continual, but it's good to get that ball rolling. So let's go back to the list I mentioned earlier. There's nothing wrong with having a, making a list or having preferences as long as I have equally yoked written on that list. For me personally, it's important to be in a relationship where Jesus Christ is the center. That means this very thing needs to be just as important to my future spouse as well. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with the darkness? The literal interpretation of being equally yoked means joined with the same. In agricultural term, a yoke is a wooden beam normally used between a pair of oxen or other animals to enable them to pull together on a work workload when working in pairs. If a yoke joins two oxen together, then they need to be the same in order to work together. Otherwise, they won't be able to accomplish the goal of farming and tilling the land. So to break it down even further, the yoke that is the wooden beam is Jesus. The oxen is my future spouse and myself, and we need to be the same in one accord to work together in this thing called life bonded by marriage. So 
I'm confident that the Holy Spirit will provide wisdom and discernment for me to know if this kingdom principle stands true for my dating prospect as well. And if it is, then we're both on the same page. And if we're on the same page, then we're off to a good start. When I invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of the dating process, it is because I understand that he will be so fluid in the dating level that he will spill into the next level where that involves the relationship. And that will spill into the level where it involves marriage. So it's important for me because each level of commitment requires new growth and new understanding. I acknowledge that I need his continual guidance and I know I'll receive it as long as I ask for it. James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks, lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. In the dating process, the Holy Spirit will be working in both myself and my future spouse individually and if compatible, he will work on us together as a unit. Thank you for joining us in this week's Nuggets of Hope. We pray that you were encouraged and strengthened. We invite you to join us every Wednesday on Instagram and Facebook for another message. We would like to also invite you to our Sunday services. I would like to leave you with a prayer found in Ephesians 1.18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. God bless you.